Right, we've reported often on the shortage of young people who want to work in the building trades in Maine. It's a real problem. But there's another profession without enough qualified workers, engineering. One of Maine's leading engineers says the state will need a lot more people with those skills and has to start finding and training them now. And as 207's Don Kerrigan shows us, he is eager to spread the word. Can building with spaghetti and sticks and having failures actually lead to this? To build the bridges and the buildings of the future, Maine urgently needs more people to create them. We need to double how many engineers we're, we're producing to, to, to make a dent in what the need is in the state. That message comes from the man who may be Maine's best known engineer, Professor Habib Dagger director of the Advanced Structures and Composite Center at the University of Maine. His lab is leading the way on everything from offshore wind energy to houses made with 3D printers. Some of his lab's designs are now spun off as Maine businesses. Growing the state's economy, he says, will need more engineers, architects, computer scientists, and construction experts. How, how critical is that need? Very critical. Maine doesn't produce enough engineers uh, to, to just to be able to do uh, what we need to do today. So, um, so the University of Maine um, has looked at a plan to close to double the number of engineers that we we, uh, we graduate uh, here over the next five to ten years. And, That's uh, that sounds pretty demanding. It is very demanding. Some of the binding agents, we have uh, gumdrops, we have big marshmallows. So Professor Dagger was on the road in Portland, joining high school students to inspire what he hopes will be Maine's next generation of builders. In this class, they use gumdrops and marshmallows to hold together sticks and spaghetti to build a basic bridge. So you're going to have two big girders on each side. Yeah. It's a program called ACE, short for Architecture, Construction and Engineering. And appropriately, they met in Portland's Mechanics Hall, created 150 years ago to inspire the builders of that day. The students get mentored by professionals in the field, local architects and engineers. All of them are interested in architecture, construction or engineering. So like Adam said, we're really trying to help them figure out which part of ACE they really want to focus on. The entire construction industry is constantly looking for younger people. Um, here in Maine, we're obviously a much older um, state, as well as the, uh, the industry itself, it tends to be a little bit more older leaning. So this is definitely developing that next generation. Can you take a, a bunch of these and span this like that so you can strengthen it? Then it's testing time for their first try at stick and marshmallow bridges. <laughs> It's hard to connect the different pieces. <laughs> okay. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. Don't shake it. Oh, no. Learning design lessons as they go. Any complications during the construction process? Oh, yeah. Because even these bridges, the engineer tells them, need to be strong in the right places. Where is it bending the most? Right in, the in, in the middle. So you want the strongest part to be in the middle then, right? The, the bridge that actually uh, did, did the best for now was was massive. So uh, we, it has two good, it's, we call it the girder bridge. The, believe it or not, you've designed a girder bridge. The ACE program hopes days like this will strike a spark in these young builders, just like it did 14 years ago for Ben Winchell, who was a student in Maine's first ACE program. I had a little bit of an interest in architecture. I wasn't really sure what it was, um, but being part of the program really allowed me to explore that and um, understand better what the profession involved. Ben is now a project manager for a local architecture firm and is helping these students as a mentor. The marshmallow would just like tear apart yeah. versus a gumdrop is more stable. Evelyn and Kaylee are from Scarborough, both are looking to go into these careers. I've wanted to be an architect since like second grade. <laughs> Related to uh, engineering and 
well, maybe more so alongside computer stuff. Alana and Trevor have their own goals in mind. Yeah, I like sustainable architecture, so that's like what I've been wanting to do for a bit. I'd say I'm interested in chemistry and material science. And Sean from Gorham. I want to be an engineer or an architect. It's kind of like the pathway that I'm looking down. And Sean from Freeport. Yeah, I think I want to go into like more of a mechanical engineer. They have already learned through trial and error the same process engineers and designers have used and learned from for centuries. I'm going to ask the question, what did we learn here? Joints. You know how many joints you had on there? Like a lot. A lot. So a lot of places it could fail, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, that's, the, that's the lessons learned, right? Yes. Yeah. If the joints are the weak point, don't, put, don't use a lot of them. And they all showed the value of those lessons learned. Think about where you were in the first one and the second one, right? You've, was a night and day difference. The professor and the mentors hope these simplest lessons can start these kids on their journey, get them thinking and wanting to become Maine's next builders. Uh, I'm not sure I'm ever going to look at spaghetti and marshmallows the same ever again. That is definitely going to be <laughs> one of the takeaways, I think, for all of us non-engineers. <laughs> Exactly. All right, so there were only a handful of students on that day for a special class with Professor Dagger, but the ACE program currently has 47 kids involved. It's just in southern Maine schools right now. There is still a chance to sign up, and we've got information about that in the 207 section of our website or app.